Hello everyone, I'm Becky with Piece of Cake. Today I want to show you how to make placemats. This is a really fast and easy project, but it's one that gives you, when you're done, functional, cute placemats that you can use yourself or that you can give as gifts. And whoever gets them is going to love them. So, give me just a minute and I'll show you how to do it. You will need 7 eighths of a yard each of the top, back, and lining fabrics. You can make placemats that are the same front and back, or you can make placemats that are different fabrics on either side. I decided to line the inside of my placemats with white fabric because I had white fabric. That was one main thing. But the other thing is that it, it's a nice weight. You could make a placemat with nothing in between the two layers, but that extra layer of fabric is pretty nice. It's not too much. It's, it's not too little. I ironed all the layers of fabric. I set the white fabric aside and I placed the cat fabric and the Santa fabric right sides together. I lined them up along one selvage edge made sure they were nice and flat together and then I reached down and got the other matched selvaged edge and I brought the all four selvages up together and placed them on my cutting board. I used my ruler and squared off the right side of the fabric sandwich. I measured over to the left 13 inches I cut strips 13 inches wide. Now remember, I'm, I'm cutting through four layers here. So I took that 13 inch strip and then used my rulers to cut off the folds, keeping a square edge. And then I measured over from that 18 inches and cut off the selvage edges. What that left me with were four rectangles in two pairs where the two pairs are right sides together. One of the fabric liners, one of the fabric rectangles, white rectangles, on top of the uh, other pair. Now this is going in the inside, it doesn't matter which side you place your liner on. I want to show you the corners. And I decided it was a little more finished looking if I blunted off the corner. Let me show you on a finished one what that looks like. So this is the corner that I want to sew. I think it looks good. So, if you want to do that, uh, what you'll need to do is mark a 45 degree line wherever you want it to be. I mean, this can be totally up to you. You can bring it in farther if you want a bit deeper angle or farther out. I'm using a small ruler and lining up the 45 degree angle here. And I'm measuring across two inches. So as I make sure this is lined up with the cut edge of the placemat, I make sure this measurement from here to here is two inches, and then I'm going to mark that with the pencil line. That's going to be my sewing line. Either begin with a back stitch or with a knot if your machine has that. And I'm beginning near on, on one of the long sides, about two inches from the corner. When I get to that diagonal line, I'm going to sew beyond it just a little bit. 
and then I'm going to back stitch to it. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to be sure that those points at the corners are reinforced. Now I went a little too far, so let me back stitch one more stitch. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to back stitch a couple of stitches at the beginning of that line. I'm going to sew beyond it for a bit, and I will back stitch. Oh, probably need one more before I turn. And remember, I'm I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance, so I'm using my quarter inch foot. I'm going to back stitch there, and then I'm going to sew. Do you notice that I'm not using pins? My fabric, because it's been washed and dried, it it stays where I put it pretty much. If I noticed the fabrics creeping as I sewed or if I was having trouble with them moving around, I would pin. The other thing that I'm doing with my hands is, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit more. I'm keeping my hands flat, my left hand especially flat on this fabric sandwich to make sure that the fabrics don't creep out of position. So I would, whoops, see, and there's one, I want to fix that right there. I would sew all the way around in this same fashion, just like that. Now, one of the things I like to do as I come back up to the opening I'm going to hold the fabric at this end and give it a gentle tug, not too much, to make sure that all my layers are nice and straight. And right here, I'm going to need to leave an opening to turn it. The temptation is to make the opening really small, but that makes it hard to turn. So give yourself a minimum of two inches, if not more, and finish out that seam in the same way, either with a back stitch or with a knot, and then cut your thread. I'm going to use the little scissor guy. There we go. This is my thread bridge. Sometimes I use it. Most of the time I use it. I didn't then because the camera was in the way. Once you've sewn all the way around the placemat sandwich, You'll trim away the excess fabric at the corners, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Turn the corner, find your opening, and reach between two right sides of the placemat. And I'm going to hold the fuller side in my left hand. as I work my way to the farthest corner. And then I'm going to shove that corner through. Be careful not to rip out the end of that seam at the beginning and end of your opening. Be as gentle as you can. Think calm thoughts as you try to figure out where to grab this. I had to think lots of calm thoughts. This is not my favorite thing. But you can, even if it's not your favorite thing, you can make it work. Next, you'll want to reach up inside the layers and straighten out the corners and the edges. I have two tools that either of these would work. What you want is something that's got a point but not too big of a point. I've got to find my opening. There it is. A, a point that isn't so pointy that it'll rip through the fabric at the corners you might have a kitchen implement that would work if you don't have a special turning tool. Now at the corners 
you want to get up into that corner and do the best you can to work that corner out. So I'm holding the placemat flat and running that tool along that edge. And that's and it came out of my little opening. I'm going to turn this this way. Now I want to look at that point, that point. So you, you get it as tidy as you can with a tool, and then you'll take this to the ironing board. When you take the placemats to the ironing board, work the seams out so that they're, the seam is all the way at the edge of the placemat. Watch and make sure that your edges stay flat. If you have to, reach back inside the placemat to poke out a corner. Uh, let's see, when you are pressing the opening, be sure that you get at least a quarter inch seam allowance turned under on both sides. Now on one side you'll have a single layer of fabric and on the other side the lining will be part of that turn under. So make sure you press that nice and smooth to match the rest of that side of the placemat. Once they're pressed then you can top stitch these. I'll be back and show you that in just a minute. Once your placemats have been pressed, you'll want to do the top stitching. The first line of top stitches is going to be very close to the folded edge of the placemat. And I'm going to pay close attention to where the needle goes in in relationship to where I'm feeding this folded edge of the placemat under my uh, presser foot. My placemat, the folded edge, is going to be just barely under the right leg of the presser foot. I'm using a tool to help hold the placemat flat against the bed of my machine. That's going to help keep it, keep the placemat flat and it'll keep the fabric from hilling up so much in front of the presser foot. This is an Appliquick tool. If you don't have something like this, you could use a stiletto, you could use an ice pick, I suppose. You could even use a, an orange stick. You could use a bamboo skewer. There's all kinds of good tools out there that you could use that are not fancy. But if you have the fancy one, this is a good time to use it. So I'm holding that flat. As I approach the corner, I'm going to slow down because I want to stop at just the right spot so that when I turn, I haven't gone too far or too little. So that time I went just a little a stitch short. I'm going to take one more stitch and then turn. For those of you who might be wondering how I can raise the presser foot without having a hand in there, I've got a knee lift. I'm using my Bernina that has a knee lift. Now, do you see that little hill that's forming? If I lift the presser foot and kind of smooth that out, I want to take that fullness out before it gets to be too big. So I'm going to 
go all the way around the placemat. And if you get off a little bit, it's mostly okay. It depends on how much your thread shows on the dark green side of this placemat the white thread really shows but on the white side it doesn't show much at all and that's one reason why I'm sewing with the dark green side up I want it I want to keep an eye on how my line of stitches looks okay I will get all the way around and then come right back to you. I'm almost back to the beginning and I noticed that I did not start with the back stitch. I probably should have. So what I for sure want to do is sew over that beginning line of stitches and be sure to end that with the back stitch. I might even go forward a couple more. Then I'm going to cut my thread and leave some tails because that, that'll make it easier to clip those threads later. And then I want to do my next line of top stitches. What I'm going to do is keep just about that much, what you see there. I'm going to keep that much fabric to the right side of my presser foot. When you get close to the corner, eyeball where to turn. And if you make a mistake, you know really it's a it's a placemat. It's not going to show that much. You can back stitch a little bit or do what I did and go forward one more stitch once I checked it. So here I want to go forward one more. And you'll sew in this manner all the way around the placemat. Once you've gone all the way around the placemat, stop and trim away your threads. And then give it a look. That is really cute. Oh yeah, these are wonderful. Here are my finished placemats. I have four Christmas placemats that have cats on the front and Santa Claus and his reindeer on the back. And I have four Thanksgiving placemats that have pumpkins on both sides, same fabric both sides. And I even had enough fabric left over that I was able to make a little square mat that my daughter-in-law, Celia, who is going to get these, she'll be able to use this on her table in the center. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you enjoy making your own placemats. May you have many happy stitches. Thanks for watching.